So here the Chazonish is telling you, we've seen so much wisdom, but now for all that haven't been convinced yet, or all that need even more chizuk, he says, let's go into something that we fail to appreciate enough until it stops working, until it has issues. Look at the wisdom that you have just from your digestive system. How no matter what you eat, it turns to blood. No matter what you uh, chew, it's going to go into the same tube. It's going to go into the right place. It's going to be digested. There's going to be special chemicals released to deal with each and every different food that you have. It's not all just one size fits all chemical. There's a specific unique chemicals that are released to deal, to digest the meat. There are different chemicals to digest the fruits and vegetables. There are different chemicals to deal with all types of other, whether it be candy or breads or cakes and all types of other things that you eat. Everything has its own unique designated soldiers that are coming to deal with it. Coming to pick the best of. Oh, cake, let's see, what do you got in here? Okay, you're good, good, good. 95% no good. Okay, it goes out. Okay, fruit, 95% good, 5% no good, out. And every one of these chemicals goes and does what it does like a loyal army that you have inside you. And the beautiful part of it all is even further when you realize that you have so many different body parts that are dealing with this digestive system. You have the small intestine, the big intestine, the stomach, the stomach acids in there, you have the, the gallbladder, the kidneys, all of these different body parts are working together. After it does this, it goes here. After it does that, it goes here. After every one of them is working together. And you need every single one of those body parts to Be'ezrat Hashem work in stellar speed without slowing down, without taking a day off, without taking a vacation. Because the minute one of them decides, you know what, today, I'm going to nap today. I'm going to take a day off. It's a holiday. I'm going to take a day off. You have, my, you have a problem. Now, Chazoni says, these special functions, they all work in marvelous coordination to sustain this whole journey that the food has. To turn it into red blood cells, white blood cells, to make sure the blood continues to move, and so on. The blood sugar level is also regulated, as are all other components that must be in exact relationship and quantities. If there's too much blood, if there's too little, if there's too much acid, if there's too little... If your stomach has just 1% more acid, you start having ulcers, holes in your stomach. Too little, the food doesn't get digested. So, everything has to be precise. Precise. Now, the scientists and philosophers were baffled for centuries about the argument that they could never understand. How is it that the stomach has the acids that break down the meat that you eat, whether it's chicken or it's beef, whether it's kosher or it's not? Breaks it down, releases the stuff that's not good, the stuff that's good, keeps it, but it doesn't digest itself because after all, it is a piece of meat. If you go to some of these uh, different restaurants, you'll see that they'll serve you stomach. It's a food. Middle Eastern dishes, banan kukla. Horrible to smell when you're making it, but delicious when you eat it. You know why, right? Because when they're making it, they have to get all the waste out of it. So you have all the tsoa, all the waste, all the filth from from the animal. But once they clean it up, they cook it, they put the seasoning... Delicious. Delicious. My, my, my mom, God bless her, she used to make it for us when we were kids and for Pesach. It was a special dish. The whole house would smell for two days. But after it's finished, ooh, ah, 
Ooh, what a dish. What a dish. Now, a person understands that this is a piece of meat. How come the acids don't eat the meat? Don't destroy the meat. Don't break down the meat. That's actually the stomach. So the truth is that Akadosh Baruch Hu in his infinite wisdom made sure that the acid work in a certain way that it does eat the meat. It does break down the meat of the stomach. But the stomach reproduces its cells and regenerates just as slightly faster than it goes down. Meaning, 500 million cells are destroyed, 500 million and one cells are reproduced. To make sure you're constantly, okay, you're break even at all times. Once there's a slowdown in the system, there's too much acid, or the stomach has some type of issue, then you have problems. That's why you have all these different digestive diseases, Baruch Hashem, that I've uh, enjoyed over the last uh, almost 20 years, and many others unfortunately enjoy, uh, whether it be Crohn's or irritable bowel syndrome that pretty much torture your life for half the day. These fantastic things, Rabotei Kareem, are gifts from Hashem. I promise you, even though they're a torture to deal with, they gifts. Why they gifts? The Gemara says, someone that obviously learns Torah, does mitzvot and so on, but suffers from problems in the stomach, doesn't seep negenum. Why? The suffering you have from the stomach will wipe out a lot of your sins. People that understand what genom is, pray for this. Rebbe Kadosh prayed for this. Suffered for years. For years. He suffered so much. Rebbe Kadosh, Rebbe Yudanasi. The Baal Mishnah, the father of our oral Torah that we have today, when he would go to the bathroom, he was very rich. Gemara says, he'd make sure to tell the guy that uh, was managing his horses, he had 500 horses, tell him, feed them now. Feed them now, and then you go to the bathroom. Why? Because when horses eat, they make a lot of noise. So imagine 500 horses going, yeah, that's a lot of noise. And he says the suffering from Rebbe Kadosh was so extraordinary that he would scream so loud, not only will be louder than the, the, uh, the, the horses, they would hear his screams in the middle of the ocean. That's how much he suffered. Did Rebbe Kadosh ever complain? No. Why? He understood the value of suffering. Anyway, but people today, they unfortunately... It's a hard, hard thing to deal with, but you have to be strong to deal with it. You have to be very strong to deal with it because being weak, complaining about it, will never help you. Some people get blessed and it goes away. Some people don't, but either way, the, uh, all of those people understand the value of the stomach. One uh, recent uh, new uh, follower of our shirim saw our personal story, started watching the shulim, and uh, connected to the uh, part of the uh, personal story about sickness. He said, why? He sent me a picture of himself and how he has a uh, cancer in his stomach. So because of that, they had to connect a tube that's double the size of my hose outside for the water to his stomach. And that's what he has, a hose connected to his stomach. Shem Yishmo V'yatzil. You know what kind of suffering that is? But he's living with it. And it's going to help him a lot. If he does complete Shuvah, it's going to be the best thing that ever happened to him. But you have to understand, you have to be at a level to understand that. You have to be at a level to understand that because sometimes, we, you know, we have a pain, we complain about it. Complaining about it never helps. What helps? Understanding that there's a value to it. So, anyway, when a person loses the normal usage of their stomach, whether it be by Crohn's or irritable bowel syndrome or Shalom cancer, or any of these uh, very, very difficult diseases that for the most part are not curable, um, at least not yet, um, by traditional medicine, they understand the value of the stomach that a lot of people do not. When you go to the bathroom and it just goes out easy and everything is easy for you, you have no idea what I'm talking about. You have no idea why I just expanded on this point for 15 minutes. Don't ask too many questions. I promise you, you don't want to. 
You don't want Hashem to give you that example of why why you just expanded on this story for 15 minutes. You do not want a Kadosh Baruch Hu to explain to you why you have to see Hashem Yatzar, the blessing, after you go to the bathroom, every time. Not one time for the whole day. Like, so one guy told me, listen, can I just do one Hashem Yatzar for the whole day? Say, if you go to the bathroom one time the whole day, yes. Go, no, no, I go to the bathroom like a lot. I go, I don't know, a bunch of times. Sometimes too much. I said, so every time you go to the bathroom. Go, why? I said, because every time it's a miracle. You want Hashem to show you why? You want Hashem to show you why it's a miracle? Well, stop working. Let's see how you, how, how you like it. Or it'll work in a different way, where instead of uh, liquid coming out of your urethra, there's going to be a few stones coming out instead. How are you going to like that one? You think it's going to be fun? Some people say it's the worst pain that exists for a man. It's like giving birth. Or maybe every time you go to the bathroom, you go to number two, you're going to scream, yell. Why? Because you feel like you're giving birth also. Because you, every time you go, it's like you went seven times, eight times, nine times. You want that one instead? Whole toilet's full of blood. You want that one? Or you, no, 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 Rabbi. I'll just say it. Oh, okay. Tzaddik, tzaddik. Chazak ubaruch. You gave me chizuk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chazak ubaruch. What chizuk. What bal tshuva you are. What a bal tshuva you are. Psh. You didn't need an example of Hashem. It's a real bal tshuva, Bemet. Why? Most people say, no, no. Why, why is it too big? You're, you're machmi. I'm going to go to Drol. He said you could do once a year. Rabotai, you don't want a Kadosh Baruch Hu to tell you why you say Hashem Yatzar every time. Why? Because it's a miracle. The fact that it doesn't matter what you eat, it goes out, miracle. Goes out without pain, even more miracle. Think about it. You ate a steak the size of your head. How come it doesn't come out the same size? And you say, well, I chewed a small piece. Yeah, but let's say, okay, you chewed it in pieces. But down there is an acid. Maybe the shakshuka. Put it together. Dote it together. So we're back to one piece. With the potatoes, with the tomatoes, with the candy, with everything. One piece. No. How come it's soft? The apple you ate, the this you ate, the candy you ate. How come? Because the Kadosh Baruch is merciful. Kadosh Baruch is merciful. You should thank him for that. Person that doesn't understand that, too stupid to deal with. It's important. Kazonish figures it's so important, he writes a part of his sefer to talk about it. The miracles of your stomach.